Hello everyone and welcome back to The Sims 4 Cats and Dogs and we're back with another random genetic experiment challenge with our dogs in order to see if science has gone too far. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little bit concerned. Maybe it has because we have ended up with our strawberry cake tigers and I didn't expect to end up with the lovely Lola. However, she is the child of experiment one and experiment two. As experiment three, she is going to be leading the way today. We are going to be creating a mate for her. And then once we create that mate, we are gonna see what their puppies would be. And then hopefully, from there, we might regain a little bit of ground for more normal looking dogs, but this is in large part just a fun, relaxed kind of <laughs> little experiment with the Sims for Create a Pet, and I really love it. I think it would be really fun to maybe do something similar to this, only with maybe an alien or a scientist as a little bit of a let's play challenge. That would be pretty cool. Maybe you could like hit your dog with the freeze ray gene, very gently mind you, it would probably just tickle them, and randomize all their genes. That would be kind of interesting actually, to have some of that simlish humor and simlish silly science added into the game with pets as well. I say that in the game that has rainbow and golden poop, but we'll discuss that later. Anyway, we are beginning with Lola and we are going to go ahead and make her a new random mate. Eventually we may try this with cats, but I find the variety of features on the dogs just offer so much more for us to really just go hog wild or you could say dog wild. So let's go ahead. We are going to pick the name of the dog first. The name is going to be the 12th name that pops up and this is going to be experiment number four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is Allie. Whoops, actually. Apologies, Allie. We are going to go ahead and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Pretty sure that the dogs have to be opposing genders in order to mix them together. Doesn't really matter if you ask me for doing these kinds of just and create a pet challenges, but we'll go ahead and roll with it. All right. So next up, we are going to go ahead and we are going to save the traits for the very, very end, but we need to pick the breed. So the sixth breed to show up is actually going to be our base breed from which we shall randomize all the other genes. So are you guys ready for this? One, two, three. Oh, it's so cute. Four, five, six. There we go. And we have brought in a foxhound. We seem to be dealing a lot with foxhounds in our current series. So I think this is pretty hilarious. But now we have the foxhound. We are going to see what kind of body it's going to have. It's going to be the seventh body we get. There we go, seven. If I don't if I don't count it out loud, it's because, you know, I'm not I don't wanna step on Count Dracula's toes and or well who was it? Count Count Countcula? Oh no, I have just dishonored Sesame Street. Not a good way to start the day, Siri. Alright, moving on to the tail. Let's go ahead and we are gonna have the eleventh tail. Nine, ten, eleven! Oh, we have a tail! I was a little worried for a second we wouldn't end up with a tail, but thankfully we do have a tail. All right, so we still have a tail. I'm so nervous. And then, oh, next up is actually the face. So we need to go ahead and we are going to pick the 10th head shape that pops out. Whew, I'm hoping we get a longer nose to balance out. Well, we do have a pretty long nose on Lola. So, all right, so we need the, uh, let's see, 10th nose, I believe it is. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Oh, there we go. Almost a gasp of relief that it's a pretty normal looking dog. For now, at least. Okay, now we're going to go to the ears. Third set of ears. One, two, three. Oh, oh, Toby, you're turning out so cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, his nose, the ninth nose. And then, ah, he's still so cute. He looks like, you know, the friendly dog next door when you're growing up as a kid and you just want to go over there and play with them. Oh my goodness. All right. And then we need the first set of eyes that pop up. Ooh. So the very first one is what we get, you guys. 
Oh, Toby, look how beautiful. I hope he brings those beautiful blue eyes into their child. Oh my goodness, I would love that. And now we are gonna go ahead and step back and we are actually going to enter the pattern time. This is the dramatic moment, you guys, <laughs> where we get to find out if Toby gets to keep his good looks or not. So we get to pick the fifth pattern. Are you guys ready for this? One, two, three, four, five. Toby! Toby, I want to save you as you are! Oh my gosh, he's really cool. Isn't he just awesome, guys? Oh, be still my heart. Okay, hang in there, Toby. You're definitely, you're definitely getting some unique looks. Okay, so we gotta be ready for this. You guys, now it's time. We have to randomize the coats. Everybody cross your paws that hopefully we might have a little bit of a break from the neons. We need to pick the tenth pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, Toby, nine, ten. Oh, okay, brown, brown's good. Brown's good. Brown's actually really good. And now the eleventh one. Ten, eleven. <gasps> Toby, why? Oh, you guys, isn't he just so handsome? Okay, last one. We're almost out of the woods. The ninth one. Eight, nine. <gasps> he looks normal. Huzzah, huzzah. Oh my gosh, Toby. Experiment number four is going a lot better than experiments one, two, and three in terms of staying away from the neon vat of genetics. So now it is actually time to pick his fur. We are going to go with the fourth fur that shows up. And oh, there were so many wrinkles on the last one. Did you see that? That was so cute. Okay. And then that was the second one. And then the third one. Oh my gosh, Toby. Be still my heart. Can I just save you as you are? Toby. I'm just like, I'm jaw dropped about this. I don't question this guys. I've got to save experiment one five. Okay. I've got to save Toby. <laughs> I think I want to use him for my green family challenge. I'm in love with him. He is just so freaking beautiful and he has survived so much. Surviving our random genes so far, natural selection or random selection has brought him this far. I think he may be the green family's new dog. Dang. All right. One last one. And now he has, has no fur. I'm so sorry. So glad we saved him while we could. Uh, all right, Toby, you still look pretty awesome. And he has brought in quite a new twist to our genes. Little does he know it's about to get pretty darn intense when we actually breed him with Lola in just a second here. So let's go ahead and we are actually going to pick the third outfit for him just as an optional outfit. One, two, three. Oh, and he looks like a little rescue dog. There we go. All right. So that is what he would actually look like. And then we are going to pick the fifth from where we start down at his other, his like other trait. One, two, three, four, five. So he is vocal and friendly. And then we need to pick the twelfth from that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So he is vocal. He's friendly and he's active. So definitely a kind of in your face, fun dog. I really like him. That's pretty exciting and pretty fun. And let's go ahead and we're going to have a treat of getting to see what puppies he and Lola would make. So let's check this out, guys. We're going to dive in to the breed mixer. <gasps> Hello, little one. Your eyes are two colors. What? Oh, that's because you're with an unknown parent there. And are you guys ready for this? Dun, dun, dun. Done. Oh my. <laughs> See, so this is very interesting, guys. We are playing with Create a Pet here because even though we're expecting so much mishmash of the genes that we are working with, as you can see in Sims 4, you really kind of just end up with uh, whatever the base coats of that dog family, the inheritance might be from. I'm hoping that's something that's patched out in the future. I want to see blends of our dogs. I want to be able to look at our dogs and I want to be like, I see traits from both parents. I don't see traits from both parents on this one per se. I see Lola's, Lola's face, kind of, and I see Toby's body, kind of, but you know, I really, I want to see, 
I kind of want to see that strawberry patterning stay in. But all right, let's see. We are going to pick the ninth child. And the ninth child shall be the one to carry on the next arc of our little fun random genetics experimental challenge. Don't be alarmed. All right, so let's go ahead and find the ninth one. We will take some time to look over each of the nine as we get there just to see what they would be like and to try to kind of understand a little bit better how the random genes work in The Sims 4. So one. Oh my. Oh my. Now here's a great example of a dog I would not have said because the coat looks nothing like the parents. It looks like one of my lab assistants messed up in the laboratory. You know what I mean? But if you look at the facial features, I feel like the physical features of the animals really reflect the parents a lot more, but the coats just don't at all. And I really hope that's something they consider fixing in the future so that you get a blend of your custom coats. You don't end up losing your custom coats. We, we've made a llama, by the way. Did you guys notice that? We've literally made a llama. I, I, I kind of have to, okay, I have to save this one too. Okay, oh, then I don't, ah, you can't, you can't, we, okay, this is going to be a failed experiment. We made a llama. I'm sorry, I can't turn my back on the llama. Somehow I have made a llama. I don't know how, I'm just going to put this down. Uh, actually, llamas are not friendly, excuse them. No, I made an alpaca. Alpacas are friendly. There we go. And I will mess around with this a little bit more. Um, a jumpy adventurous so they wander around and pretty independent uh yeah we'll we'll, we'll put that down well no very hairy because that's what they're wanting they're like usually for maybe not jumpy jumpy makes them afraid of things we'll do uh adventurous and we'll do smart because alpacas are very smart so there we go <laughs> I made an alpaca, and, and el the alpaca is, is definitely a failed experiment. So we're going to name the, um, there we go. Uh, we're going to, mm, let's see. There we go. There we go. A special experiment, the alpaca, <laughs> that we accidentally ended up making. <laughs> I'm kind of like, kind of hilariously laughing about that. Okay, now back to trying to have them have a mixed puppy. No, Miss Alpaca, you're going to have to wait. I will save the alpaca because that is just too awesome. We are resuming. This is more what I was thinking about with Toby and Lola having a baby, by the way. But as you can see, the baby 100% inherits all of Lola's coloring. So I think what we may end up doing every time we start with a new dog is if it's very clear like this, that there was absolutely no crossing over of patterns we might actually go through and like randomize their colors if not the pattern shape just their colors just to see what would happen i don't know we'll have to see how this experiment that's what this is all about goes with our genetics so all right that's baby number one would grow up into this puppy i can actually kind of see this as a mix ish between the two experiment number two looks almost entirely like toby with lola's eyes oh my gosh and lola's ears actually so yeah you and a bit more of lola's body she's definitely got more oomph on her than toby does and toby's nose too but again you really don't see the coat colors change and i really 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 hope that's something that possibly changes because it would be so much fun to see that all right so experiment number three. Oh my you look like somebody else snuck up to Lola and mixed some different kind of genes in, but very awesome. Experiment number four looks just like Toby again. Experiment number five looks like kind of Lola, Lola, Toby, and a llama. Experiment number six. Up, oh, up. Oh, now we have a brownish llama. Seven. <gasps> Whoa, we have a we have a Lola colored Toby. And finally, oh, we're not there yet. We need to do nine. Okay, experiment number eight. Okay, now we have a gray llama and the inheritor of the experimental genes title who will carry us on into the next round of genetic experiments and possibly end up having some very interesting offspring. We are going to go ahead and we are going to see what the ninth experiment is. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we have brought out some some darker coat colors here. We have a little bit of Toby's body, I think. We have got Toby's ears. We have got a lot of Lola's traits. I think we got Toby's broader muzzle um, for sure. I don't really know where that face came from, to be completely honest, and it's hard to tell under all of that fur exactly what's going on. But may I introduce to you guys the new daughter, experiment successful, number five. We're going to give her the third name that pops up. One, two, three. Her name is Bubblegum. I love this. This is so just absolutely bonkers. And she gets the fourth trait. She is a couch potato. Now we pick the second trait after that, a glutton and a couch potato. And we pick the sixth trait after that, who is playful, a playful glutton couch potato named Bubblegum. Congratulations, Lola. Congratulations, Toby. All right, guys, I will be saving this family and I will be uploading the official experiment two. That's what this group is going to be. I know there's a lot of experiments. There's experiments within our experiments going on right now. But that is going to be experiment number three. It will include our lovely Lola, a uh, fantastic Toby. Toby, who, by the way, with a little bit more fur on him, is stunning. Our accidental alpaca daughter. She needs a little bit of tweaking to be a proper alpaca, but she is just too hilariously close to an alpaca to even <laughs> to even think she's a dog. And then uh, Bubblegum, who whose muzzle definitely doesn't say alpaca, but whose eyes say something very special. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoy the family. May at least my alpaca find a home in your hearts. And we will have to see where experiment number five will take us on into the future as we dive in once again to try out mishing, mashing, and randomizing the genes here in Create-A-Pet. So, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.